disappears from the horizon. These are symbolic terms that express the relationship of the sun relative to the earth. And Clyde, if you can, can you bring me a copy of my book back here for a second? I wanted to, to make a couple of references. Also, what's important too is um, understanding how the ancients in plotting the movements of the sun, the stars, and the moon, were able to develop not only the first calendar, thank you, not only the first calendar, but also the first clock, the first timekeeping mechanism. They, de they devised the, the, the second, the minute, and the hour as a means of keeping track of this movement. And, and as I stated on several occasions, the word hour is derived from the word Horus. Let me just read you a, a, a couple of things um, from, from my book in the chapter, Paying Homage to the Sun, about the significance of the sun. The sun is 93 million miles away, yet it exerts the most powerful force on the planet. It is the radiant day star which gla gazes down upon us from the heavens and is the giver of our life. It has been the oldest and most common object of worship in the history of mankind. It is the sun. All living things hunger for the light and the warmth of the sun that falls on us like a blanket of love. The first day of the week was named in honor of it. The second day of the week, Monday, means the day of the moon, which is illuminated by the sun. The lengthening of, of the days and nights during the course of the year are the hallmarks of our four seasons. The spring and fall equinox signal a time of equal day and equal night on the planet. The summer and winter solstices represent the longest and shortest days of the year, respectively. For over 5,000 years, people have acknowledged the sun as a symbol of goodness, strength, and spiritual rebirth. The sun is the power behind the process of photosynthesis, the means by which plants grow, animals feed on the energy-enriched plants, and man uses both plants and animals for food, shelter, and clothing. The sun evaporates water from rivers, lakes, oceans, which form clouds, and water falls from these clouds as rain or snow. Clouds are visible bodies of fine droplets of water or particles of ice dispersed in the atmosphere, which change the temperature and air pressure, thus influencing the weather on the earth below. After each rainstorm or snowstorm, the sun shines brightly to repeat the cycle and draw the water back up into the clouds. If the sun stopped shining, all life on the planet would cease as we know it. The air would freeze and the earth would become nothing more than an empty waste ball of rock drifting endlessly through space. The relationship that exists between the earth and the sun is, is, is such a fine and delicate relationship that if the sun was any closer or any further away than it is, then all life would perish. So this relationship was something that, that our ancestors saw understood, and later associated with this system that was called religion. So that one very important reality that we have to understand as, as the first forms of science evolved was that the science of time, understanding what time it was, understanding the various phases of the sun, the moon, knowing when certain ceremonies were to begin was very important. Everything that we do is a result of this important relationship that revolves around time. So a point that I've made over and over again is that time is something that we cannot take for granted. Uh, many of us uh, tease and make fun of, of, of black folk and the particular uh, time reference that black folks have, we call it CP time. Colored people are always late don't do things on time, and when you deal with the universe, you have to be on time. If the sun didn't rise when it was supposed to rise, it would throw everything off. If Sirius didn't rise when it was supposed to rise, it would throw everything off. If the moon didn't go through its phases when it was supposed to, it would throw everything off. Everything operates on a precise time frame. And that time frame is something that is very important for us as African people if we are to begin to, to understand uh, where we are and truly understand where it is that we're supposed to go. Uh, there, there's also a, a radio station right here in the Washington area, 
in uh, Alexandria, I believe, a radio station called WCPT. W Color People's Time. It plays nothing but oldies. <laughs> you know? So we, we have a habit of making fun of something that is very serious, but it's also something that we need to be uh, very cognizant of. I want to talk about symbols and symbolic thought and the importance of them. Symbols are, are carefully chosen from the natural world or, or the natures. And each symbol chosen is, is that which best expresses or represents a function or a principle. All of the symbols that were chosen were, were symbols that were associated, in many instances, to animals, were symbols that were associated to qualities or aspects of animals that uh, were significant. I cited the, the serious uh, symbol, symbolism as one. So a symbol, therefore, represents a specific principle or function on all levels simultaneously, from the simple, most obvious uh, manifestation to the most abstract metaphysical form. Uh, Horus is a symbol that is, that is associated with the sun. is important because one of the symbols for Horus was, was, uh, was the falcon. Uh, the eye of Horus is a symbol that represented the sun. The eye of Horus is a symbol that is also a symbol that is associated with God, the primary deity, in that God, like the sun, uh, stands over the planet and is able to see and influence everything on the planet below. Uh, Anubis was a symbol that, uh, Anubis was the jackal in ancient uh, commission symbolism, a symbol that was associated with uh, the scene of judgment. Anubis was the animal or the jackal who represents the qualities of fine judgment because the qualities that are inherent to the characteristics of a jackal. The serpent is a very important symbol that we see repeated over and over again in ancient Kemet. Uh, the serpent is a, an animal or a creature that has a forked tongue. The serpent also has a forked penis. The serpent also has this, this um, process of shedding its skin. So that aspects of the serpent came to represent this quality called duality. <coughs> The ability to exist on two levels, the ability to discriminate, and it was symbolic. The serpent was symbolic of a higher and a lower intellect, the duality between the two aspects of, of the intellect. So it's interesting to see how the serpent has been represented in, in recent times, in modern times. The serpent is a symbol associated with something that is evil, as opposed to something that represents the duality of the human intellect. The vulture is a symbol that was associated with the assimilation or the passing over to the, the afterworld. And if you've noticed on the, the, sim, the, the symbol of the crown of the pharaoh, you see the pharaoh uh, when he was alive would wear a crown that had the serpent on it. That serpent would reflect this, this intellect or the dual aspects of the intellect. And after that pharaoh died, on all representations of that pharaoh that would show the crown, the pharaoh wearing the crown, the serpent on it, and also the vulture. The vulture was symbolic of assimilation. Those two symbols were only together, shown together after the pharaoh had died. And once again, it's interesting to see how uh, contemporary individuals misunderstand these symbols. Those of you who have ever seen the movie The Ten Commandments will notice in the movie Yul Brynner, who supposedly represents the pharaoh uh, Ramesses wears throughout the entire movie uh, the pharaonic crown that has the cobra and the vulture on it, a symbol that is associated with them. And that was primarily because they were taking the symbolism directly from the crown of King Tut, and they didn't understand what the symbols on that crown meant. So to have symbols and to not understand the essence behind the symbols means that the symbols don't have the power, they don't have the significance that they're supposed to have. But one of the very important things that <clears throat> we see that, that came out of the study of the heavens, the movement of the stars, uh, the, the, the learning of, of, of time, was a science called mathematics. And it's through mathematics that they began to, to be able to, to further plot other relationships. Most of what is known about Egyptian mathematics comes from a papyrus that was made in the Middle Kingdom called 